I have a YouTube channel, um, and I speak about what actual freedom is, not limited freedom, not watered-down freedom, not let's petition the government and beg them for a little bit of freedom, freedom. It's just do whatever you want and don't hurt another person, freedom. So what's your story? Yeah. What's, your, what's your story? When did you stop believing in statism? Um, I was, honestly, I would say... I hate to say I was born that way. I always knew government was wrong. I, I never, I registered to vote to make my father happy and wrote my father in <laughs> as <laughs> the one <laughs> who should be president. Uh, I, I've never really believed that government ever did anything good, ever. Um, I went through 12 years of Catholic schooling, um, which in and of itself is extremely oppressive. Um, but I did, you know, I learned a lot, you know, I guess right from, I learned more from my parents than I did from any kind of schooling or, or anything like that. Um, I was definitely, um, unschooled, not in the definition that is, you know, homeschooling, unschooling. I was unschooled in the way that what I learned at home counteracted what I learned, you know, in school, uh, to believe in, in government and that if you just petition enough or beg a politician enough that maybe he'll let you be a little bit free, a little bit freer than you were before. Um, and then I just kind of started realizing that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years of petitioning, voting, uh, has never voted us into freedom. It's only voted us further and further into oppression. Um, and all you have to do is open a history book. Uh, even the ones that lie will show you that government eventually ends up in an oppressive, an oppressive regime that will usually <laughs> kill you. <laughs> um, and that's where that's what we're on our way to right now. So um, I've always believed that. I just never knew that there was a name for it. Uh, it was so. Speaking about these things has always been so taboo up until, I would say, the last couple of years. The word anarchism, the word anarchy just was insane. I, I thought anarchy was chaos and, and murder and theft and, and robbery until, uh, honestly, about a year ago. So I've always been, I would say, a voluntarist. Um, uh, Vol like voluntarism is a way of life. Anarchism is an idea. It's a philosophy. Um, voluntarism is how you execute it. So I've always been that way. I just didn't know there was a name for it. And um, once I started, I walked out of um, a very well-paying job, a very comfortable job. I had no idea why I walked out. I just did. Um, and then a week later, I received an email back that I had sent out months before from Michael Salvi in Philadelphia because I was looking to kind of get active in, in the... Uh, uh, you know, the, the Liberty community in Philadelphia. And the day after I walked out of that job, I received an email saying, oh, hey, sorry, uh, you know, no one got back to you, but uh, we have this event coming up. And then from that day forward, I just, uh, my life was dedicated to it, and I, I never looked back. So, sorry, that was long-winded, but that's my story. <laughs> There's a great quote by a French philosopher who articulates it perfectly, who was an anarchist, and anarchy is not a bad thing, it's not chaos, theft, murder, it's actually the opposite. Um, it's um, what this, I, th I think it's Etienne de la, um, thank you, um, and he says, I ask not that you uh, put your hands on the tyrant to topple him over, but that you remove your support from underneath of him so that he falls of his own weight and crumbles. Um, we are funding the system. That's the, it works because we're giving them money. And so you stop giving them money and support, yes. If you localize. And I, I love evolving. If I just stopped in one spot on my radio show and said, listen, I'm just going to pound this forever, I'd be stupid. And that's what that's why radio radio is failing is because we have a bunch of stupid people on there that keep on pounding the same thing over and over. The wrong ideas, no solutions, signing to their guns even though they're wrong, and everybody knows they're just going to go along with it. It's complete horse crap. So yeah, I've gone through, I've gone through, and I've, I've evolved. You know, I, I've gone from the place where I thought uh, I was independent, like I said, to where I was libertarian, and I, I still I'm a registered libertarian. And but I have I have a lot of I have a lot of belief in anarchy as well. I really do, and I'm I, I have an anarchist heart inside me. But I do love I do love liberty, and it's become it's become a passion of mine. A, a fun anecdote, I guess, something. That, that comes to me is there's a, because we're we're at a 
we're at a huge disadvantage by numbers as far as numbers go from uh, from Democrats and Republicans, and I believe that most of them are libertarians or anarchists. They just don't realize it yet. They can be taught, just like they can be untaught what they know, just like they've been taught what they know. And that's that's something that I truly believe, uh, 100%. But there's a, like I said, the numbers game is is terrible, and I get a lot of people calling and, and leaving me voicemail messages. I have to change my number uh, every every three to six months because of death threats and things like that. And it's just part of become part of my life. I had one guy call me not too long ago, and he called me an asshole, and then then told me I needed to go tie my dick in a knot. I thought that was creative. No, no. Well, well, my my exact response on the radio was, if I had the equipment to do it, I'd be doing it all the time. I'd be double knotting it, you know, playing balloon animals and and having having fun. But I, (laughs) I like it. I like it. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's my story. I kind of answer that. I'm gonna let her answer that too. Okay. Well, the fun anecdote. Um, Well. A lot of what I say is controversial, so it's not all fun response that I get. <laughs> um, the best one I got, I guess, was at a, um, a great outdoor convention in Harrisburg. This is a feel-good one. It's a mushy one. Um, I was you know, just walking around. I was there with the Oath Keepers, and we were walking around looking at some of the booths. And um, <laughs> you're Oath Keeper? Oath Keeper? Yeah. Oh, yay. Um, <laughs> And uh, we were walking around, and uh, a gentleman uh, stopped, and he had the paper in his hand, just kind of hit me on the, just like tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, are you, is your name Josie? I said, yes. He said, are you the one with the video that yells at the cops? (laughs) I looked at him, I was like, this guy's a cop! (laughs) Um, And I said, yeah, that's me. I didn't yell, but yeah, that's me. And he actually just, he bear hugged me. I mean, he's a state trooper, because I'm a state trooper. Um, and gave me a really big hug, and he said, "Thank you so much." Um, I, you know, I share it with, with, with all. With, I've shared it with all my buddies, and I, you know what you said is absolutely correct. And uh, you know, we really need to stop. You know, everyone needs to hear this, and it's not just police officers, but um, you know, everyone needs to pay attention. And it just, I, I had to hold in. <laughs> I'm not a big crier. <laughs> I had to hold in tears. Um, until he walked away, because that's why I do it. That's that's the whole reason. That one moment is why I do it. Um, and it's just, it's phenomenal, because I'm so used to getting the, I mean, the a fun anecdote. Uh, I mean, they're all just obscene comments about my anatomy, and it's just, <laughs> I know, I get it, but also I can Guys say, are so clever, I know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, in that case, I'm not. I don't even really take those seriously, unless you know, if they have an, an you know, an intelligible, an intelligible, an intelligent. Um, <laughs> I'm so intelligible. Uh, an intelligent, you know, rebuttal. Then I'm happy to entertain it. But when it's just uh, a lot of words, I'm just impressed at how many obscenities they can get into a small space. <laughs> so um, I guess that would be my best anecdote. And um, has my philosophy changed? I think is that what you would. Uh, as your view of what everyone else... Oh my gosh, there's a mass shift in consciousness. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's global. And it's not just, it's not just in the United States. It's all over. Um, and I didn't... It's, it's interesting because you don't realize it until, um, I guess, you know, I had... I just made these YouTube videos. I'm like, oh, YouTube videos. People are, I'll get a couple of views. It is what it is. And, and then all of a sudden I started getting emails from, you know, all over the world and it's just everyone's sick of it and it's not the United States, it's not just us that's a police state, Australia is worse than us, they have it really bad Um, it's all over the world and everyone's ready for a change, they just don't know what's coming next so right now I guess our our goal is to really spread the word on, um, you know not, we're we're not shooting for, to, to abolish this government and establish a new one because that's, we've been trying that for a millennia. And every time you, smart, you start with a teeny tiny government, you end up with an oppressive regime. It's just the way it goes. Um, whether it takes a couple months, a couple years, or a couple centuries, it always ends up that way. So, um, and everyone says, you know, well, it's not, you know, anarchism has never worked. Okay, well, it's never really been tried. So let's actually try it um, and, and see if it works. So, do you, see, do you see anarchy happening in your lifetime? Not in my lifetime, no. 
absolutely not. Um, I think that we have to lay the foundation. I think we have, this is the time to start. It's a discussion. Yeah. And ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would love it. I would hope. I know, right? Right? I would love it. I would absolutely I know. love it. Um, and not even anar anarchy or anarchism. I, I, volunteerism is the way, is how, is the best way to describe it. Um, you know, communities coming together and, you know, just a libertarian society. And I don't mean libertarian as in the, the libertarian party. I mean, a libertarian means someone who believes in liberty, you know, in true liberty. I want a free volunteerist society all over the globe. That's what I want. That's my wish. <laughs> one more, one more, one more than enough 30 minutes for socializing, drinking, smoking. All that fun stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. Uh, one more. Another yeah. question? Yeah. Anybody? Uh, about GMOs. What do you guys think about the labeling thing? I, I'm <laughs> calling you right out about it because that is it the right of the government to put a label on it or should we do it voluntarily? Voluntarily. voluntarily. It, I, I think that the government it, the did you know, I, I mean, everyone is aware of how I feel about the government. <laughs> the government can just go and, you know, Do you want people go politicizing the, the labels? Because that's what happens. You know, just get the labels get politicized. It'll be a rent-seeking fest to try to get your shit on the label. And at the end of the day, like, if the label's involved, that means the FDA's involved, right? Right. right. Yeah. That's yeah. The Which is another corrupt government Let's do organization. You had one? Want, you want yeah. to wrap it up? There's an interesting book on the... Uh, cultural transition of America from somewhat totalitarian to less totalitarian. It's called America 3.0. I wonder if it's come up on your show or Josie if you encountered it. I have not heard of it, but you know. no, I have I have I unfortunately have very little uh, very little time to read a whole lot of things. I just read excerpts of things and people send me books and it has run across my desk and I've had a chance to, to flip through it a little bit. What uh, what question do you have inside? Hopefully I've read uh, a part that you, that you have a that you have an idea on. What's uh, what's your question? Again? I'm just wondering if it's in the air at all, if people are reading it, we're talking about it. Oh gosh! I hope we're talking about it now, so that's that's a that's that's a good step. Hopefully, we can we can we can do that. Any any liberty-minded book is is a is a great way to go. Or any any book that's uh, I like I like to read. The, let me go let me go one direction on this, then come back to what you're talking about. I like to read a lot of things that are completely the opposite of what I believe. Completely the opposite. So of what the Constitution. I yeah, things like that. <laughs> Completely opposite. Yeah. <laughs> Completely opposite to what I believe because I like to be able to pick it apart myself and make my own ideas out of it, which is important. Uh, cryptocurrency, I love it, and and uh, Jeffrey Tucker and I have had a lot of good conversations, deep conversations about it, and we go back and forth a lot on a couple different ideas. I, you know, I own a little bit. I'm not diving head first into it, and, I, and it's just because I'm just so damn busy with everything. And it's getting explained to me by a lot of smart people, and that's why, you know, again, coming on the road like this, I want to talk to people that know more than me, and to to discuss that and get more ideas. My belief system really hasn't changed. Money sucks, and uh, <laughs> that's kind of all that I've I've always believed. If if we can change things, if we can have a, a monetary system that's that's for, that's from the people. Uh, that's that's obviously what we need to be doing. It would be silly to think anything else, in my opinion. People out there, they're spreading lies. They're all funded by the same corporations. They're getting marching orders. And how do we stop that? Well, that's pretty tough if you have a, a bunch of liberty-minded people who don't believe in, in money, <laughs> because money is is what is what it takes. And we have people like, like these sponsors up here, and, and uh, I should add also, uh, Next News Network, Gary Franchi's thing that he does, uh, is a great news outlet there. Those things need more funding, and they need more lip service. They need more people out there talking about them. Because right now, even people within the liberty community, which I do like that term, within the liberty community, they're still on Facebook and on Twitter, and they're posting things from, uh, from Fox News and things like that. And they may say, oh, yeah, this is wrong. But at the same time, you're giving, you're giving them credibility in doing that. And I don't like to do that. I don't like to quote Fox. I don't like to quote CNN. If I'm going to quote somebody, I want to quote I want to quote Ben Swan. I want to quote uh, Gary Franchi from Next News Network. I want to, you know, Luke at We Are Change. I want to do I want to talk I want to talk about those people. You know, all all those people that have the right idea that are doing things right. And there's a lot of people that get their YouTube channels shut down. There's a lot of things that are going on right now that are that are really screwed up. And what it's going to take to make a stronghold, if there's ever going to be one, 
is just a, a, a unified push to make it happen. And that's even harder when you in, in the Liberty community because the Liberty community is like herding cats. It's almost impossible. Everybody, everybody's an individual, and they, they want to do their own thing. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, don't tell me what to do. Exactly. So that's what makes it hard. Okay. So what I think that everyone's trying to figure out here is how do we let the system collapse? Because it's going to collapse, and we know that. And how do we not kill each other? Like that's a, a, how do you not you, you how do you not kill each other? You not kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, yeah. you're making, you're making, you're making, you're making,